There are times when God will allow certain things to happen in our lives because in His love, He wants us to seek Him. He wants us to call on Him. Psalm 50 verse 15 says, And call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you will honor me. Now, if there never was a day of trouble, what would make you call on God? How else would you see the mighty hand of God deliver you unless there was a day of trouble? And so I'm talking to you, the person who's saying, I've been facing so many battles. The person who's saying, I've been facing real warfare in my mind, in my family, or with my health. If you found yourself to be under attack in multiple areas, dear child of God, I want you to know that the Word of God encourages you. In Psalm chapter 55, verse 22, as it says, Cast your cares on the Lord, and He will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. I want you to know that the Word of God encourages you. In Psalm 32, verse 7, as it says, You are my hiding place. You, Lord, protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs and shouts of deliverance. Hear me when I say this. It's only when you're in trouble, when you have a need, it's only when you're at the end of yourself that you'll meet God's goodness. It's only when you find yourself in trouble, only then will you meet the loving hand of God that will make a way where there seems to be no way. It's only when you're in trouble, only then will you encounter the God who told Moses, I am who I am. When Moses asked God, who should I say has sent me? God replied and said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Now, what did God mean when he said, I am? Well, it is my belief that God said, I am who I am because he is an all encompassing God. He could have just said, I am the God who delivers, but that limits him. He, he doesn't just deliver, he also leads, he also protects, he also makes a way where there seems to be no way. God could have told Moses to tell the children of Israel that the God who heals has sent me, but once again, that would limit our God because he doesn't just heal, he can make you whole again. He can resurrect and give life. He is a God who can restore. So I believe that God said, I am who I am, because whatever we need him to be, he is that. If we need him to be a father, he is a father to the fatherless. If we need him to move a mountain, all of nature will bow down to his voice. And so, people of God, let us be a people who reverence the Lord for his power and majesty. Even when we're going through difficulties. I want to ask you a question. What's your if? If you could do this, or if you had made one decision instead of another, how many times have you heard someone say something along the lines of, I would have started my business if, or I could have made it professional if. Now, it's not my place to validate whether or not every if is justified. But what I do want to point out is that every one of us, we have a story whereby one thing happened, but in hindsight, if we had done something else our story would have been very different. Some ifs, they're hard to swallow, right? Somebody somewhere was so close. Somebody somewhere was just about to break through. And if only they had continued. If only 
they had trained harder. If only they had worked smarter, the results would have been different. Yes, some of the what-if stories we have, they're really just painful memories and regrets. But let's put aside all those ifs about your job, your business, your career, and let's, for just a moment, consider our walk with Christ. Have you ever thought, what if Jesus Christ never died for my sins? (laughs) Where would I be? What if Jesus Christ wasn't filled with so much compassion, with so much kindness, so much mercy? Really, where would I be? Saints of God, this is an exercise that will make you realize just how blessed you are. Because when you consider the alternative to what God has done, when you consider the alternative to what God has promised or to what God can do. The alternative is simply destruction and death. I mean, really think about it. What if Jesus Christ never took on our sins on the cross and said it is finished? What if we had to pay the price for our own sins? And what if we were the ones to be put on a cross? Now that's a scary thought. What if God's mercies weren't new every morning? With the amount of times that I have fallen short, (laughs) I cannot imagine that. I want to encourage you. Count your blessings. I want to encourage you to never take God's goodness for granted. Ask yourself, where would I be if God never loved me unconditionally? Where would I be if I was never truly forgiven? What would have become of me if God had never saved my life? Where would I be if the Lord left me alone and in the hands of the enemy? If God took away my health, my family, my life, where would I be? These are difficult and scary thoughts because if it wasn't for Jesus, The truth is, I don't know where I'd be if it wasn't for the Lord, if it wasn't for his grace, his amazing grace. I'd still be blind to his love and his mercy. I'd still be lost. So saints, we need to be thankful. Thank God that he's a father to the fatherless. He's a protector of widows. Thank the Lord Jesus Christ that he is the friend that sticks closer than a brother. He's a savior to those who are lost, a healer to those who are sick, a redeemer to those who are condemned. Now, I really believe that from this type of mindset, a mindset that fully appreciates God's goodness and God's blessings, we should move from the what ifs that benefit us and look to serve God. We should begin to have a desire that says, if only I could lead more people to Jesus Christ. If only I could be of service in the body of Christ. If only I can walk in the will of God and walk in a way that is pleasing to Him. If only I could live a life that glorifies God every day. This should be our only if. This should be our only desire, to live a life that's pleasing to God and to live a life that seeks to serve Him. 